What's good, y'all? What's good? What's popping? It's your girl, Killer Queen T, aka Blackout. Blackout T. Mm hmm. Coming through with some more. Keep it real. I'll be here. Andy. Where you be at? No. We ain't on that yet. Um, I think the dumb is me is short enough where I could do um two chapters today. Of the dumb well, of the right dumb, now. Of the dumb is me? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was me, chapter three. What's behind door number one? The elevator door all opened slowly. It was almost as if I was in Twilight Zone. I stepped out and assume, assumed in a place I was not sure. Eden's place was unbelievable. The condo had an ocean view. The entire interior, interior was glass. Everything was white and the floors was marble. Completed with a walk around venue. There was a huge shot water aquarium in the middle of the room. It was at least a thousand gallons. The tank extended from the floor to the ceiling. All 14 side and glass doors were open, which allowed a, breeze, a brisk breeze to blow through. The place was breathtaking and empty. The only thing in there was a grand piano and a super king sized bed. I must admit the crib was flat. Quincy, is that you? Yeah. I'll be out in a minute. Make yourself a drink. There's a bottle on the balcony. Eden was in the bathroom. Woman. Women. Never ready or on time. This was the time to plunge her through her stuff. But there was nothing to plunge her through. Quincy, there are chilled champagne glasses in the freezer. Pour us a drink. Okay. I paused looking in the refrigerator. refrigerator. Eden, what are you doing? I'm preparing myself for you. Fresh and sweet. That's how I like it. Besides, I get full of that rock hard champagne made me a sexual tyrannosance. I got the champagne out of the freezer. I walked out of the, out of the kitchen onto the balcony. I strolled halfway around the building before I, I found the bottle chilling in the ice. It was the only thing on the balcony. The view was incredible. Hi, Quincy. Sorry to keep you waiting. I turned slowly. What I saw was unreal. She was more remarkable than I remembered. She had a full-length cuffling dress with nothing on underneath. The wind blowing against her body revealed all her access. She had a very unusual smell. It was almost intoxicating. Her was cut short and styled nice, similar to Holly's. Her nails and toes were manicured. She was perfect. I had her a glass of champagne. Finally, I spoke. Hi, I missed you. Tell me what you miss about me, Quincy. Damn, she had to ask that. I miss seeing your pretty face, the way you touch your head when you laugh. I miss you. I miss the thought of you. I waited for her to respond, but she said nothing. She just looked at me as if she was coming into my soul. Come here. She walked toward the edge of the balcony. I poured myself another glass of champagne. I was afraid of heights, and we were 35 stories up. The only thing keeping me from falling was a waist high, high rail. She grabbed my hand and pulled me toward her. Your heart is beating so fast, she said, while rubbing her hand across my chest. You excite me, I said, trying to conceal my feel. Do you want me? I nodded my head, slowly in an up and down motion. Take me, she said. We were in a kiss. I wanted to step inside of her body. My tongue seemed as if it couldn't do go deep enough into her mouth. I grabbed her head very gently to control her movements. I did just so I controlled myself. I was moving too fast. I slowed her down and she began to moan. I caressed her breasts while pinching her hard nipples. She became limp in my arms. I picked Eden up and carried her into the bedroom and laid her down on the bed. Looking at her while I undressed. Eden looked up at me as she sucked her fingers and inserted her, them inside herself. I laid down on her. Kissing and sucking her breast through her dress. I went down on her. Licking and sucking, she was screaming my name. Quincy, Quincy, Quincy. I pulled her dress up slightly over her navel. I hesitated, looking into her eyes. She was lost in the love we were making. I put myself inside her. Eating screamed, wrapped her legs around me and squeezing. I stopped pumping so she would relax. I kissed and caressed her face slowly and softly. 
She opened her legs wide like a rose in full bloom. I grabbed her legs and pushed them into the bed. I had her knees touching her elbows. She, she yelled, give it to me. Don't do it, baby. Get it. So I did it for about 15 minutes. I was on a mission to please her. I flipped her over and hit it from the back. I slapped her on the ass and told her to take this dick. Eden was leaning down, reaching back, squeezing my ass. She was the other hand to simulate herself. Eden could sense I was about to unload. She was in squeeze and contract her vaginal muscles. I shot off a Roman candle. I fell to the side in ecstasy. She immediately started sucking me. I wanted her to stop. It felt so good. It hurt. She was humming, looking at my balls and all. My eyes rolled back in my head. My toes began to twitch. I'm about to explode, I told her. That because I didn't want to shoot off in her mouth. She didn't stop or slow down. I came so hard, I thought she might choke. I never saw an ounce of that semen. She laid there with her head on my thigh. Moved me around her mouth. We looked at each other for about 10 minutes before we said anything. It seemed like a lifetime. At that moment, I was content with a beautiful woman with a smoking head. She began to suck me until I was hard again. She stood up straddling me. She pulled her dress over her head. She rubbed the dress across my face softly, teasing me. That was the first time I had seen her entirely naked. Do you like what you see? I nodded yes. She bent down, slowly inserting me inside her. She was looking at me as if she could see through me, as if I belonged to her. Up and down, back and forth in a circle of motion. She was riding me like a champ. Do you like me, Quincy? Do you like the way I feel? Before I could answer, she started to climax. As she was riding me, she leaned back slowly, never breaking her rhythm. She quivered, grunted, and fell forward, kissing me while she grazed into my eyes. I should stop right there, y'all. But I'm going to go. Mm, let me, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely about to go on to chapter four. Chapter four, a gentleman never tells. A gentleman never tells. I told everyone I knew, all my boys. I couldn't hold this in. I struck gold, and I had to tell it. I immediately called my boy Hammer. We got in Hammer because he nailed all the women. What up, Hammer? Ain't nothing, just chilling. You know I hit that right? That bad one from the beach? You hit it? Yes, player, I beat it out. Was it good? I was good. Yo, homie, honey, it was a straight freak. She looks booty and all play, boy. Damn, son, you the man. Show you right. I'll holler. One. I remember how I'm yelling, lying, telling me that he screwed this girl 20 times in one night. Man, you know you lying, I said, while I looked at him out the corner of my eyes. Nah, money, I'm serious. I knocked her down 20 times in less than 24 hours, kid. We went through an entire tube of KY jelly. I was like a machine. You're a machine, all right. A land machine. Some stories were just too unbelievable to be real. That was one of the many I heard. We usually had these conversations anytime we had a new freak. I think that we I think that we all had to make our stories better. Only that time I was telling the truth. Eden was a bomb and she had my nose wide open. Ooh. We open, open. We ready to. Is we ready? Is we ready? Is we ready to leave our wife? Settle down, become one with the world, well. with things around us, with the way of life. I don't know why, but I was addicted to the year two thousand and fourteen for some odd reason. Oh, no, I wasn't. I'm gonna do that for do that later. Do that later. We going back to the tick. Where we where we where was we? Where was we in the tick? Where was we in the tick? The naked city was in the naked city. Oh, we was trying to look for some some more other stuff to investigate. Some crimes. Some we was looking for some bad gas. That's what the fuck we was looking for. And we was looking for some bad gas. And somebody was like, "Didn't we just break out of a site war?" And we was like, "No, the fuck." We ain't bring out no damn sideboard. You know what you're talking about? No, you don't. Shut up. Keep it moving. What are you, some type of weirdo? No, I'm a tick. A what? I'm a tick. You're a bug? A tick. You ain't no tick. Ticks up. Anarchists, they have eight legs. You haven't got eight legs. What are you, an expert? Do you suck blood? What? Ticks suck blood. Do you suck blood? Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, 
I suck blood all the time. I don't believe you. I got a straw right here, Paul. You want a demonstration? <sharp inhale> Didn't think so. Easy, big fella. Easy. So you will tick. So what? I mean, I get all cancer. And prickles with warmings, extraterrestrials, time traveling fish. You think being a tick is bad? Try being a walking dead. Gee, no thanks. Yeah, well, you see what I mean, right? Everyone's got their own problems, buddy. Hell, I still get visions from my previous life as Theodore Roosevelt's daughter. Being a tick isn't a problem. It's an honor. You can't be Alex Roosevelt. She's dead. She was a woman. You can't be no dead woman. <sighs> Never mind. <sighs> so tired all of a sudden. Well, you're bound to get lightheaded sucking that through a straw like that. When? You all right, buddy? Buddy? <sighs> Blacked out again. Gee, it sure is dark in here. Well, I must be in the well. Great Scott, someone's in the tunnel and that train's coming. I only have seconds. Too many people here. I won't be able to change to my costume. I can't real I can't risk revealing my secret identity. But I got to help the helpless, right wrongs, and stand for truth, justice, and the American way. Damn, I should write this stuff down. Got to use my very quick speed to move faster than the act of follow. Hmm. Away. <laughs> hmm, I'm not too up on well and omni, but I don't recall them having two metal rails in their stomach. It's probably a blue whale. Wait a minute. There are three whales, rails in here. Zip. Zoomy. Quickly, citizen. We're almost out of time. Mm. My God. A giant whale grass digested in us. I'm in a whale. Please, citizen. The train is almost here. Hey, hands off. No, you don't understand. I'm a superhero. I have to save you. <laughs> nice try. You're an eminence. Say, what is that? Bam! Oh, it's a train. Rumble, rumble. Darn it, I hate getting run over by trains. Thud, rumble, clang, rumble, clang. This isn't happening. Loud noise, rumble. Rumble. Thud. Hey, wait a minute. That was a subway back there. So you're invincible too, huh? I'm not invincible. Too bad. Oh, God, I'm late. Perry's going to kill me. Damn. Maybe I should fly around the earth at unheard of speed in reverse time. No, I did that light this week. Damn. So, so you're a superhero too, huh? You got a secret identity? Listen to me very carefully. I'm Clark Open Hammer, mid, mid man and reporter. Get that? You don't look like a reporter to me, Clark. 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 Come back here. You forgot your hat. He said, come back in. You forgot your hat. Okay, so that's what we're going we to leave off on that. He forgot his hat. So we got a good guy running off. We got a good guy running off. Running off, running off, running off. And we're going to do a little. Will I be able to do two chapters over here? Will I be able to do two chapters? Mm, yep, I will. Let me see how my chapter. Mo! So you gonna put your head in the camera like I'm not finna put this posters on on YouTube? Oh. Like I didn't just say that. Now that's gotta be all through my video. I hope you happy. In chapter three. If you ask me, at this point in my life, they is, um Stuart Little is not part of this damn family. He is a fucking slave. He's a fucking slave. He is a slave. They treat this little boy like he not like that like like the little bitch didn't push his ass out her coochie. It's not my fault. She he he look like a mouse. That don't mean you gotta treat him like a motherfucking mouse. And it ain't my fault. He don't know no better. Okay, chapter three. Washing up. Stuart was an early riser. He was almost always the first person up in the morning. He liked the feeling of being the first one started. He enjoyed the quiet rooms with the books standing still on the shelves. The pall light coming in through the windows. And the fresh smell of the day. And one time, it would be quick dark when he climbed from his bed, made of 
made out of a cigarette box, and he sometimes shivered with cold as he stood his night ground doing his exercise. Good. Stuart touched his toes ten times every morning to keep himself in good condition. He had seen his brother George do it, and George explained that it kept the stomach muscles firm and was a fine abdominal thing to do. After exercising, Stuart would slip on his hand his handsome wool wrapper, tie the cord tightly around his waist, and start for the bathroom, creeping slightly through the long, dark halls past his mother's and father's room, past the hall closet where the carpet sweeper was kept, past George's room, and along by the head of the stairs till he got to the bathroom. Of course, the bathroom would be dark, too, but Stuart's father had thoughtfully tied the long string to the pool chain of the light. The string reached clear to the floor. By grasping it, as high up as he could and throwing his whole weight on it, Stuart was able to turn on the light. Swinging on the string this way, with his long back for trailing around his ankles, he looked like a little old flirt pulling up the bell hop in the abbey. To get to the wash bin, Stuart had to climb a tiny rope ladder, which his father had fixed for him. George had promised to build Stuart a small special wash man, only one inch high and with a little rubber tube through which water would flow. But George was always saying that he was going to build something and then forgot about it. Stuart just went and went ahead and climbed up the rope ladder to the family wash bin every morning to wash his face and hands and brush his teeth. Mr. Little had provided him with a dial-sized toothbrush, a dial-sized cake of soap, a dial-sized washcloth, and a dial's comb, which he used for combing his whiskers. He carried these things in his bathrobe pocket, and when he reached the top of the ladder, he took them out, laid them neatly in a row, and set about the task to turn the water on. For such a small fellow, turning the water on was quite a problem. He is disgusted with his father one day about making several, after making several unsuccessful attempts. How? I can get up onto the faucet all right, he explained, but I can't seem to turn it off because I have nothing to brace my feet against. Yes, I know, his father replied. That's the whole trouble. George, who always listened to conversation whenever he could, said that in his opinion, they also construct a brace for Stuart. And with that, he got out some boards, a small, a saw, a hammer, a screwdriver, a bra awl, and some nails, and started to make a terrific fuss in the bathroom, building what he said was going to be a brace for Stuart. But he soon became interested in something else and disappeared, leaving the tools laying around all over the bathroom floor. Stuart, after claiming this mess, turned to his father again. <clears throat> Maybe I could pound the faucet with something and turn it on that way, he said. So Stuart's father provided him with a very small, light hammer made of wood. And Stuart found that by swinging it three times around his head and letting it come down with a crash against the handle of the faucet, he could start a thin stream of water flowing, enough to brush his teeth in anyway, and moisten his washcloth. So every morning after climbing to the basin, he would seize his hammer and pound the faucet, and the other members of the household, dozing in their beds, would hear the bright, sharp plink, plink, plink of Stuart's hammer, like a faraway blacksmith telling them the day had come and that Stuart was trying to brush his teeth. Is it me, or am I the only one feeling some type of way about the treatment of this damn little boy? It's gotta be me. It's gotta be. It's gotta be me. Because there ain't no motherfucking way this little motherfucker can hop into the piano and may make their life comfortable, but they can't make this little, they can't, they can't make his life comfortable. Mm, mm, mm. Chapter four, exercise. One fine morning in the month of May, when Stuart was three years old, he arose early, as was his custom. Washed and dressed himself, took his hat and cane, and went downstairs into the living room to see what was doing. Nobody was around but Snowbell, the white cat belonged to Mrs. Little. Snowbell was another early riser, and this morning he was lying on the rug in the middle of the room, thinking about the days when he was just a kitty. Good morning, said Stuart. Hello, replied Snowbell sharply. Okay. You're up early, aren't you? Stuart looked at his watch. Yes, he said. It's only five minutes past six. But I felt good, and I thought I'd come down and get a little exercise. Mm -mm. I should think you'll get all the exercise you want up there in the bathroom. Banging around, waking all the rest of us up, trying to get that water started. So, you can brush your teeth. Your teeth aren't really big enough to brush anyway. Want to see a good set? Look at mine. Snowball opened his mouth and showed two rows of gleaming white teeth. Sharp as needles. Very nice, sister. But mine are all right, too. Even though they're small. 
As for exercise, I'll take all I can get. I bet my stomach muscles are firmer than yours. I bet they're not, said the cat. I bet they are, said Stuart. They're like iron bands. I bet they're not, said the cat. Stuart glanced around the room to see what he could do to prove the snowball. What good stomach muscles he had. He spied the darn window shade on the east window. With his shade cord and ring like a trampoline and gave him an idea. Climbing to the window still, he took off his hat and laid down his cane. You can't do this, he said to the cat. And he ran and jumped into the ring. The way acrobats do in a circus, meaning to pull himself up. A surprising thing happened. Stuart had taken such a hard jump that it started the shade with a loud snap. The shade flew up clear to the top of the window, dragging Stuart along with it and rolling him up inside so that he couldn't buzz. Holy mackerel, said Snowball, who was almost as surprised as Stuart Little. I guess that would teach him to show off his muscles. Help! Let me help! cried Stuart, who was frightened and bruised inside the rolled up shade, and who could hardly breathe. But his voice was so weak that no one heard. Snowball just chuckled. He was not fond of Stuart, and it didn't bother him at all that Stuart was all wrapped up in a window shade, crying and hurt and unable to get out. Instead of running upstairs and telling Mr. and Mrs. Little about the accident, Snowball did a very curious thing. He glanced around to see if anyone was looking. Then he looked softly into the windowsill, picked up Stuart's hat and cane in his mouth, carried them to the pantry, laid them down at the entrance to the mouse hole. When Mrs. Little came down later and found them, she gave a shrill scream, which brought everyone back on the run. It's happened, she cried. What has? asked her husband. Stories down the mouse hole. The cat ain't shit. The cat ain't shit. Oh, I gotta tell y'all that. The cat ain't shit. The story is, right, is stuck up in the motherfucking window, and then he got it looking like the story went down the damn mouse hole. So they ain't gonna be able to get his ass out because his ass up there wounded and shit. So he got a little ass voice. He up there probably. Help, 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 help. Can't even hear his ass. Damn. So is the rest, is like, is his body like a person, but his head just a mouth? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Okay, but we finna get up out of here. We'll see you again later. Um. Bye-bye. And, um, bye-bye.